Welcome Mouseworks fans, welcome to the Mouse Trap, your weekly dose of modeling news from around the world. And this week we've got a few things, uh, not as much as the other weeks, but uh, there is word about, uh, again, about the Ravel, uh, USA, Ravel, Germany split with uh, the parent company, which was Hobbyco or Tower, whichever you want to call them. Um, they were broken up by the courts from bankruptcy. There is rumor, I have not been able to confirm it, unfortunately, but that there is a conglomerate that is going to buy Ravel of Germany and Ravel and move them both to Germany and have it all as just Ravel, but out of Germany. So if they do, in fact, go forward with this, that's great news. They can actually buy up the company and have all the molds from years and years and years ago. So they will hopefully be producing some stuff that we haven't seen for a while or some new stuff that uh, might be pretty exciting. So that's the current word on that. Like I said, I have not confirmed it, but that's the word on the streets. Uh, the other news is the uh, we have a new B-29 flying. I don't know if you've heard of this, but we used to only have the B-29 called uh, uh, Fifi, and that B-29 has been flying for quite a few years, and it's been the only one that was flyable. Well, they have uh, rebuilt and put into flying condition a new one called Doc. Uh, it is actually polished aluminum. It's not painted silver like Fifi, so it's really, really gorgeous looking. And they are starting their around the country tour uh, of air shows. They will have tours, I'm sure, aboard the aircraft. I don't believe they're gonna have uh, flights aboard the aircraft for people to pay and fly like Fifi was doing. Um, hopefully they will. I think they still have to get some uh, clearance for that from the FAA. So if you haven't seen that airplane, go online. Go to the their Facebook page, which is uh, Doc's Friends, and uh, see what they're doing. It's uh, They were out of, uh, I believe it was the Wichita, Kansas area where they were rebuilding it at the Boeing facility. Beautiful airplane. And uh, take a look at it, and hopefully it'll be at an air show this summer somewhere near you where you can see it. And that is about it from the news. A little bit short on this week. There hasn't been a whole lot of stuff going on, but uh, we will now take it to the kit review. Hello again, and it is time for the mouse trap kit, new kits and new kit uh, announcements. So let's get started. There's quite a few this week. Uh, looks like uh, Meng is uh, going to, uh, has announced that they're going to do a Jag Panther uh, to continue with their Panther avalanche of different kits. Um, this looks like it's going to be very, very nice. Looks, I believe, like a late Panther uh, or Jag Panther, I should say. Um, and hopefully they'll do some other versions of that as well. Uh, the next one is Hobby Boss uh, has been doing a family of A4 Skyhawks in 148 scale and the latest one is going to be an A4M which is uh, one of the marine versions and uh, that is a really nice looking bird there's a lot of nice camouflages on that so uh, that should be out here hopefully pretty soon and it looks as good as the others it's looking very nice. Hobby Boss is also doing a Tel S400 uh, rocket I guess you could call it a uh, rocket truck, but it is the large missile uh, system on it, and that one is not quite as big as the Grumble, but it is still pretty good size and should have the same quality as the Grumble kit, which is a very nice kit. Lots of parts, though. Uh, the next one is AK in their uh, um, magazine slash book releases. They're doing one on extreme reality, which is actually going to be about rusts and um, weathering and some of that kind of stuff uh, in the extreme. And uh, that looks pretty good. They're also doing a uh, encyclopedia series. Uh, they're up to number seven and number seven will be on photo etched parts, which will be a really good one to have because there's always something new to learn about how to handle and work with photo etched parts. Um, Masterbox has announced that they're doing a bunch more figures. Uh, they're actually going to do truckers and a set of hitchhikers, two girls that are hitchhikers and two trucker figures, and then even some uh, Medusa 
that will actually be in their uh, gods series um, for uh, Greek gods, and hopefully they'll do a bit more of those. Um, if it's anything like their other kits, it'll be very nice. Uh, Gundam is releasing an RX 79BD-3, and that is a Blue Destiny Unit 3 exam. Um, something a little new for you Gundam guys. There's lots of Gundams coming out all the time. This one should be one of the newer ones, um, and it should be just as good as any of the other ones, so that'll be hopefully out soon. Gundam is very popular, so if you do want some, one of these kits, uh, special order it with your favorite hobby shop because uh, they're going to be here and gone pretty quickly. Um, Hasegawa is going to continue with their 135th scale uh, construction equipment, and that is going to be a front end loader. Uh, they already have a steamroller and a couple of uh, excavators. Um, they are coming out with another version of the steamroller, which will have rollers on both ends instead of having tires on the back and a roller on the front. But the uh, front loader looks really decent, and I think that one will be one of their more popular ones. Again, going to be kind of hard to get, so put in your pre-orders. Next up is MiniArt, and MiniArt has a set of railroad tools to go along with their railroad track and a few other things that they have released in the past. I was really hoping that that track meant they were going to do some locomotives and some cars. We really need a 35th scale tank car, German tank car, would be very welcome. So if you're listening out there at Mini Art or any of your companies, uh, take a look at that one. I think you'd sell a ton of them. Um, they are also doing a um, Lebanese Turan 4. Uh, they've done a couple Turan 4s early and late, and this one will actually be with the Lebanese markings. Uh, tons of parts on these kits, they're exquisite. Um, if you want a real challenge, that is one kit to pick up. Um, looks like, and then the other thing is kind of a surprise. Now, I'm not sure how much this is going to have in truth, but uh, on Trumpeter's Facebook page, which I suggest you visit often because they keep coming up with sneak peeks and things that are possibilities in the future and they give you little snippets as kind of a game to try to see who would who would like it or who can identify it and they put up this picture and what it is is a uh, Vulcan bomber and it doesn't say a scale it doesn't say anything about it they've even blurred out the background to, to keep you guessing so they're just fishing out there which is kind of fun as long as they listen to the people that to reply um, if they are going to do this kit I'm going to be very excited about it. It does not look like it's the Airfix kit, um, unless they're playing games, which they could be. Um, if they are going to do this one, all I can say is uh, that is going to be an awesome kit, and maybe think about doing a Victor tanker, um, Handley Page Victor. That would be very nice to get a real good one of those. Even in a bigger size would be quite nice. So that is about all I've got on new items. So let's... Uh, Switch on through to the kit review, which will be coming up next. All right, we have this week on our kit review, uh, just kit came out just recently, is the Mini Art FL282 V6 Calibri. Calibri, I believe, stands for Hummingbird. And what this is, is a kit of the early helicopter slash auto gyro combo um, that the Germans used on some of the back of their uh, ships, basically to uh, get them out and above the uh, ship to be able to view above the horizon, uh, sort of a reconnaissance type of vehicle. Um, it was experimental and they tried a few different ones of these. I'm um, not sure what success they had with them, but it was enough that they did a few different versions of it. Uh, this one being the V6. And uh, this one is again done by Mini Arts, note kit number 41001, 1 135th scale. And let's take a look at around the box. Not much on that side. Same as the front picture. And a couple pictures of the vehicle put together. I can't tell. But these might be computer-generated images, so they may have had those out before the kit was actually finished. Same on that side, nothing on the back. 
And of course they've blocked out the swastika because these are sold in Europe and you're not allowed to put the swastika in one piece on anything unless it's a uh, historical museum. For example, if you go to Germany, the museums will actually allow it. All right, kit contains 185 parts, it says. So let's take a look here. All right. So, uh, first thing we can see is it's about half the box. They probably made it in the bigger box just so it would be complementary to their other boxes when it's on the shelf in the hobby shops, so it doesn't look too small. Um, but there is just this tiny thing. So, what we're gonna do is cut it open because I can't really show you much about it that way. So let's slice her open. And it's typical uh, mini art where they put everything in one bag, which is good as long as it's tight. Um, haven't had an issue with any broken parts or anything because it's really tight in there. Um, if they were to do it loose, you could, it would be a disaster. So start taking a look at some of these here. Okay. A lot of these uh, models, I will uh, always talk about the way they're packaged because that makes a big difference on uh, what you get and what problems you're going to have with broken parts and so forth. So pop this one open. The vehicle is pretty small. That's one uh, impression I get once I open it. Um, but it's got a lot of detail looking. Okay, so we got a little envelope here which should have the photo etch parts. I like this a lot. Having a little separate envelope for their parts. They're just making sure their stuff gets to you in one piece. Okay, so we've got photo etched fret. Looks like uh, some belts some seat belts and some framing pieces, not a whole lot, but enough to add some interest to it. Okay, the first sprue looks like it is the outside panels and some of the uh, girder pieces. You can see how these are very delicate. So it is very good that they package this well because those would just be snapped off like crazy if these things slid around anywhere in the box. So it looks like they have kind of a t uh, little bit of a fabric look to it with uh, indications of bars Underneath fabric does not have a fabric texture, but uh, in this scale, it's it's iffy if you would even see that. So, but that looks really nice. Look like folded fabric there. Um, some knockout pins on the inside, but it doesn't look like that's going to matter at all on that part there. Okay. Next up is some of the rotor blades. Uh, it does look like you can fold these rotor blades. The real ones were actually foldable to get aboard ship. So you don't have to have that big of a footprint on the, uh, when you have the model in your display case, you can actually fold them back and it's gonna be a very small, compact little piece, maybe the size of a 24 scale vehicle. Uh, looks like we got some cylinder heads that are actually separate, which is really nice with cooling fins. Those are really sharp. Um, some slide molding, getting some of that detail there. They're getting really good at their slide molding with this company. Tires look pretty good. Um, not sure if this thing was heavy enough to actually warrant flattened tires. I probably will flatten mine anyways just to make it look interesting. But this vehicle had to be extremely, extremely light. Got a second row of parts, basically the same sprue to do the other side. Uh, this sprue here looks like it's got uh, part of the engine base with the cylinder heads on it. Or cylinders, the other one had the cylinder heads. Uh, again, fabric texture on some stuff looking really good. Man, the detail on these things, I mean, teeny tiny bolts and I mean, just microscopic stuff. Uh, tiny instrument panel, they didn't have many uh, instruments on this vehicle because it didn't really fly around. It was actually just pretty much uh, tethered to the, air, to the ship or kept close proximity to the ship. So that's looking really good there. All right, so let's get the other bag here. All right. And for those of you who are not, are kind of new to the hobby, the whole thing about the swastikas is, like I said, in Europe, there's a lot of countries, including Germany, that do not allow the swastika to be represented. 
Um, there's a few ways they've gotten around that for historical purposes on the models. Sometimes they will uh, give you on the decal sheet a swastika that's been cut in half. A lot of people have asked me, what, why is it cut in half? Well, it's still there. It's, it's technically not a swastika until you put it together. But by you doing that and putting the swastika together, you become responsible for making the swastika. So if somebody has a problem with it at a show, they may ask you to put a sticky note or something over it to cover it up if you're in Europe. Um, also, sometimes they will give you, what's kind of interesting is they will give you a triangle type decal that doesn't quite look like a swastika but if you cut it up again you can actually make it look like a swastika um, some of the model companies are actually putting the uh, swastika on the outside um, basically what it is is it's it's missing the the wings of the swastika so it almost looks like just a cross so again they're not making the swastika uh, this kit looks like they did do the half and half where again that means nothing if you put it together you've created a swastika and if you're in a country where that's basically not allowed in public you need to cover it up the judges at the shows will tell you that and they'll give you a fair warning on that um, looks like a really nice decal sheet though uh, looks like let's see if we got a any kind of name on it or anything it just says Calibri mini art printed in Ukraine so they do print their own decals or at least have a Ukrainian company do it very nice looking very fine the decal film goes right around the edges so no need to trim these at all that I can see um, even gives you the instruments for the uh, or the decals for the instruments gives you a couple clear pieces here looks like a maybe a landing light possibly on that so that's looking really really nice okay let's go through some of the pieces here Okay, this one has a tailplane and some of the framing again. You can actually make this model, build this model without some of the fabric covering. So you just see the framing, which is actually a little more interesting in my book. And this tree here has a lot of little tiny parts. It's a tiny model, but it's gonna have a lot of little, little parts. There is the teeny tiny pusher propeller which kind of makes it an auto gyro type uh, unit. And a uh, little slide molding again, just for this tiny, tiny piece. Okay, let's see what else we got. This is the large tailplane, um, vertical uh, stabilator or stabilizer, if you wish. Um, does have that fabric texture on it. It's real subtle, but it's there and looks real good. Uh, looks like that's one piece. This is a two piece for the lower. A uh, little wheel back in there that uh, for it to drop on or skid, if that's what it possibly might be. So looking real good with that fabric texture there. Okay, and the last sprue here. Looks like it's the landing gear and some of the covers for it. Um, some of the back pieces to behind the pilot seat. Um, there's the pilot seat itself. Actually looks, has ribs in it like a leather cushion seat. Very, very nice there. And uh, one of the covers that you can actually be optional if you want to put it on or not to cover up that uh, structure. Inside, they do have some structural ribs on that piece. Uh, does have a couple of knockout pins, but they're very slight. Those should be really easy to remove. That's one of the biggest problems with the framing pieces. They always have a knockout pin right in the middle. Um, fill it, whatever you want to do with it. But if they're easy like this, you can just sand them out and uh, can use our mouse works sanding sticks that uh, we market over there at Mouseworks website and what these are they're a little pad little sanding bit with a pad and these work almost exclusively for getting rid of those sanding for, or for the knockout pins basically get them a little wet sand them around just in small circles it'll wallow out that knockout pin and make it so it's completely smooth and they come in a pack and uh see six pack i believe one two three Four, five, six. Yep, in all different grades, all the way up through 1500. So, just a little plug there for some of the tools we're making. Um, landing gear again looks pretty good. Looks like a little yoke for the for one of the wheels. Might be the nose wheel there. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Looks like the last part is the instructions. Nice color instructions. Nice heavy duty paper. 
and the first thing you see is a color computer generated image there for where all the decals and where the painting goes and uh, then it gives you a sprue layout of all the different uh, runners there and then a color chart here and the color chart now uh, they started to do Vallejo, Mr. Color which is uh, Gunzi, Humbrol, Testers, MIG Ammo um, and then a couple uh, Russian whatever <laughs> and it's actually in Russian uh, and then it says the color name that those might be actually color names in Russian right there so um, and then uh, yeah it doesn't give a federal standard or anything or an RLM color system on it but uh, those giving you those examples should be fair enough some parts that are not used which are obviously used in the other versions and looks like they're pretty good about the drawings just making them not too complicated does have connecting arrows to make sure you get it to the exact spot instead of just kind of a general indication um, engine detail putting the cylinder heads on uh, putting the engine the exhaust of the engine there all the way all those little parts go the whole gearbox uh, looks like some more parts to the uh, rotor system and then basically framing up the back end um, looking good yeah there's a little auto gyro rear propeller and uh, more framing um, hopefully it'll go together pretty straight if not you might want to uh, break out your square or metal square or a block of wood that you know square to get these straight all right it looks like using some of the photo etched here is on that actually panel uh, cover panel on the bottom uh, the seat and putting together the two rotor blades um, looks like that's the other one there the other rotor blades put on there the landing gear front strut and then it shows you the photo etched belts how to bend them and how to make them work and the instrument panels they have they have a side panel and then the main instrument panel which is very interesting okay and then we got a couple other color profiles one in green uh, the gfyf and each blade system is actually a different color too, which is, is one to note. So uh, another one in the white or, or light gray with green blades, GFYF. And then this one on the back, uh, that one's the same one, shows the opposite sides um, with little different color blades. Even decals on the tail fins, which is gonna be very interesting. And it has a little landing light there too which might uh, lend itself to a good MV lens or even a, uh, a lighted LED if you can actually hide the wires good enough. So that is it for the Calibri. Looking pretty good. It's gonna be a lot of stuff packed into a small package. Uh, this is almost the life size picture of it right here. That's all, all it's gonna be. But uh, yeah, there's just tons of stuff that's gonna be all over this. It's gonna be a very interesting one to just to continue to examine and look at. Uh, something different that uh, nobody's really done in, uh, as of yet. So that's our review. Uh, gets a good thumbs up. Looks good. Should fit good with the mini art uh, examples of other things they've been doing. So um, if you're lucky enough to get a hold of one of these, um, get building because it's going to turn out real nice. Mouseworks fans, time for the Kit Rewind, where we look at a kit that was built uh, 20, 30 years ago and kind of examine what they were doing back then and seeing what, uh, what it was all about and, and seeing uh, some of the details back then. This week, I pulled one out of my collection that uh, is a real oddball one. It is to the movie Dune from uh, their 80s, I believe. And um, this was the one, the movie that had Sting, the uh, singer in it. And uh, they had a lot of little different vehicles in there. Special effects were so-so, but all the miniatures were actually real miniatures. They didn't have any special effects with uh, computer-generated anything that I know of in this movie. So uh, it, was a, it was a pretty neat movie. It was a long movie, <laughs> but it was pretty neat. Um, if you haven't seen in, or, or looked at any of the Dune movies, uh, TV, they had a series as well on, um, what was it, the Sci-Fi Channel? 
which was actually a little better than the, the movie, I think. Uh, explain a little more. Unfortunately, they can't get a lot of that stuff in the movies. The books, Book Dune was about this thick in paperback, and then there was a whole series, 20 or 30 different Dune books. So trying to cram all that stuff into one movie was kind of difficult. But anyways, Ravel, um, Ravel I believe this is a Ravel of Europe. It's C-E-J-I is the marking on it. They actually made a few of the vehicles that were in Dune. First one, first one being the Ornithopter, which is in the background here. And this one is the sand crawler, which would go along um, digging up spice that they used uh, to do space travel and so forth. So they were uh, uh, on the uh, moon of uh, Arrakis, I believe it was. Anyways, uh, getting back to the model. <laughs> um, what's really neat about this one is it was a really large scale. That They even did one of the worm. Um, which was an interesting one. So actually we'll take a look around the box here just to kind of see what was going on. So this side actually had a picture of Sting, some of the actors, uh, pictures from the movie, a um, little desert scene there. Sides were the same as the front. And on this side, you can kind of see there's the ornithopter and there's the worm. Uh, worm was about all of eight pieces. Um, I think three pieces here, two pieces there, something like that. It was real simple. Never been re reissued, never ever been reissued. So um, hopefully they'll do like an anniversary of this movie and release that and the Ornithopter and maybe even the Crawler. Um, looks like it says 1985. So we're looking at uh, 30, 33 years ago. Um, I was a young one when I saw that movie. And let's take a look inside. All right, still got it packaged in the bag. All right. And not very many pieces. I mean, probably about 20, 30 total. Um, you can see it's about 1 24th scale, I would say, or maybe even a little bigger, uh, looking at the seats. Um, let's see if I can pop it open here. It's just taped up. So we'll take a quick look at it here. And like I was explaining in some of the other reviews of models, this is what used to happen in the old days. You get a bag full of knocked off parts. Um, they just didn't do a lot of good engineering on the framing and the runners um, as they do now. You just don't see that problem anymore. So we've got um, Dino De Laurentiis Corporation, 1985, right on the belly of the thing. Two seats for the drivers. Um, looks like just some little fiddly bits there. Uh, one of them is giant hinges for the glass plate on the front. There's another broken off part. Uh, this one, there's another broken off part. Anyways, um, so we've got these weird wheels that it was using as these little sand paddles here, kind of interesting. Spring suspension even. Um, looks like even a frame for the windshield, if you will or the uh, cockpit door, whatever you want to call it. And uh, again, good, good size for the scale. Um, they never did show the interior of one of these, so they didn't do a lot of detail on the model for the interior. Um, if you want to light it, that would be kind of cool, but uh, your guess is as good as anybody's on what the actual interior of this vehicle looked like. Let's see what else we got here. More parts that broke off. <laughs> okay, this is what we were used to back in the 80s. Um, just happened a lot. Warp parts, missing parts, broken parts, uh, things like that. Um, looks like a piece of the rear, I guess. Uh, another piece of the tail wheel. And some broken miscellaneous parts. Or I shouldn't say broken, but just, just knocked off the, the runners. Um, what else is in the box here? Okay, we've got the glass for the windshield, windscreen or cockpit glass, whatever you want to call it. It is actually smoked, which is kind of cool, um, but it's huge. I mean, there's and there's just two seats in there. I, not even a, that I can see any kind of a cockpit layout or control unit or anything like that. So it's a free for all. Here's the instructions. They've been uh, around a while. They didn't use acid-free paper, so it's starting to yellow quite a bit. Um, and let's see what else we got. Uh, parts layout, two-hole sprues. 
That's <laughs> Mainly they, they figured this would be for youngsters, um, easy to build up, have fun with. Um, looks like the wheels are these giant uh, avocado looking things. Um, cockpit, there's those giant hinges, two seats. Although they do have an actual control panel, but it doesn't have anything on it. So um, then some louvers and a little something exhaust stack type thing on the back of it there. Pretty clear with the instructions. And there's the top view and the side view. Uh, they don't, they do give you some color call outs here on the first page. Um, matte brown steel, rust black and light brown. Um, and they just kind of get flag them as you go through it. So kind of a weird looking vehicle. Um, not sure if I'm going to build this. It's probably got a little bit of value on eBay. Um, but it's kind of got value to me because I remember the uh, show itself and the fact that they have not reissued that um, kind of makes it a little more special. So um, very interesting. Talks about the movie and so forth here on the front and uh, nothing on the back. So looks like that's about it. So that's rewinding it quite a ways. Um, basically in the time that everybody was doing uh, sci-fi movies, Star Trek and Star Wars and so forth. So they decided to do that. So anyways, um, might just even rent the movie. It's actually kind of a kind of a good movie, but it's long again, I warn you. So, so that is our uh, review of the uh, basically going back in time and uh, seeing some old stuff on our kit rewind. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. All right, welcome to this week's edition of New Gear. Uh, for this week, I am going to be doing a review of some stuff I got in from Hong Kong. And this is from a company called Despiae, Dis D-S-P-I-A-E. And they've been doing some really luxury tools. And uh, I've got their cutter and uh, their circular cutter. Their sprue cutter, I'm going to wait till next week, so I'll keep you guys in suspense for that. So you'll have to tune in next week to see a review of that. That's supposed to be a set of cutters that is like what they call the God Hands, very clean cutters. So tune in next week for that. But for this week, I'm going to be looking at their stepless adjustment circular cutter. Now, this is a fancy, fancy way to cut circles, but if you are wanting to do circles in concentric circles, like doing roundels and so forth, uh, it's very hard to do using other tools. I mean, you can use these ones here. I've got a couple of ones here. This is by Olfa, and this is just a compass here that you can put a blade in. Um, these are actually not too bad for doing one circle. The biggest problem is, is trying to get the item to not spin while you're cutting and unfortunately you still have a little problem with the wobbling around like that. So by the time you get around to the other side, it's not a perfect circle. Drawing works good, cutting is another story. This one is a little better because it's parallel instead of being an actual A-frame like this one. Again, you have the spike and then the cutter that goes round. Unfortunately, again, you can get it wiggly, may not come around to the same point. Plus, if you're doing concentric circles, it's very hard to readjust and then put it down and hope it all comes out the same. So, enter this one, which is supposed to be the basic uh, Rolls Royce of circle cutters. And I've seen this in Europe. Um, some people in Europe were doing this, but these guys really took it up a step. So first thing is uh, real nice boxing. And I must admit that this came from uh, Hobby Easy. They did an excellent job of packing it. It was shrink wrapped and then within bubble wrap real tight. So I really appreciated the way they were reinforcing the packaging to make sure it didn't get damaged even though it was just a tool. Uh, the company itself making these hard boxes, which is really nice. Uh, so you can store it in it. Again, very luxurious luxurious type uh, box on the side here shows the different uh, sides front back side um, their company little history here and some features 
uh, says this product uses a new and unique design concept in order to reducing the difficulty of spray paint as well as standard circular cutting time. So, um, but again, beautiful boxing. So let's see what we got in the box here. We got uh, a little thank you. I mean, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, us modelers and artists spend a lot of money on tools and models and uh, it's really tough for us sometimes. So I really appreciate them actually thanking the buyer to choose their product. Let's see, okay, so the first box, kind of got this flip thing, looks like a little CD case. Um, color pictures of the assembly and the blade holding of it. it looks like it has three separate blades. Uh, the blades are also supposed to toggle with a magnet so they can actually, when they cut, the blade can actually pivot instead of scraping at an angle. So that's very nice. So gives you some tools here, Allen wrench, some screws. It almost looks like a radio control car kit uh, with all these things. So there could be some assembly required. Has a little flathead screwdriver in there as well. Um, some of the aluminum parts here it looks like and some of the cutter blades in this packet right there. Again, very, very nicely packaged. Very nice looking so far. Then we have a uh, piece of foam protecting the actual unit itself. So let's pull this out. It's got a fitted case. I mean, that's just, you, you expect this to be on something like a Mercedes-Benz part or something like that. I mean, it's just, this is just top-notch, first-class packaging. Okay, so this, the ones I've seen before uh, in Europe had a giant ball bearing system, but they were plastic on the outside. So it was like so-so. When this came out, machined aluminum, I was like, that, I gotta have that. So basically, it's an aluminum frame around a... Uh, giant ball bearing race here it's for real smooth action. Um, it looks like I actually have to assemble these two pieces. You can see they're separate, have little grooves in them that are uh, everything slides around in. Being machined, it's going to be very precision. Screw going in here to keep everything tight together and uh, put some pressure on this bearing so it doesn't wobble side to side because even the smallest amount can screw up your circle. Um, looks like there is a gauge here. So you can actually do your first circle and then just move the gauge and then your second circle without even moving this. So we're gonna give that a test here in a bit. Of course, I have to assemble it. Um, the bottom here has a plastic cover, but it has kind of a rubber foot system underneath. So it's kind of a, kind of hard to explain. It's just a real smooth rubber to keep the whole unit from moving around. Because again, any movement is gonna screw up your circle that you're trying to create. So we'll pull those off. So what I will do, I won't bore you with the assembly of this whole thing, but uh, uh, maybe I'll do a quick uh, fast forward of the assembly and then we'll give it a try. Okay, a couple notes on the assembly of this. The instructions are kind of confusing. So basically what I figured out was they don't tell you where to put the little magnet, but I found out that you put it right in here and that magnetizes the whole unit. That way this little cutter blade actually will fit in there and hold tight with the magnet. The other thing that they are not clear on is the washer it goes under here, under the little knob to make it rotate. And that should be tightened pretty tight, but this little piece will move so it's easy to rotate. Also, these screws that go in from the sides, these two big bolts, um, you have to tighten them and then untighten them because once they're fully tightened, this is very hard to move. It's very stumpy. So move, move them out uh, a little bit, just enough so it makes a smooth transition. Also, moving this up and down with this little nut moves the blade up and down into whatever material you're cutting. So uh, a couple suggestions there of figuring it out and we'll cut something here soon. Okay, I've got my piece of Tamiya tape here on a uh, mat board here. And basically I've adjusted this so the cutter is actually a little bit uh, sprung up. So when you press it down, basically it's gonna fit. You can see it move actually when you press it down. That was the way, that's the way it cuts into the, the uh, tape better. So I'm gonna hold it in place and I'm gonna rotate it. You can hear it cut. And then I'm going to actually move it out 
just down a little bit. See if we can move it about there. Okay, tighten it back up. Okay, press it back down. Do the circle. And let's see what we got. Be careful when you set this back down, you can break those blades. So we've got an inside circle here. So I can get it with the blade. I kind of messed up the circle already with just the blade. But there's the inside circle. And then the outside circle. So it is as if this was a roundel, or if I was just doing some type of a circular mask. So that's that part. So I kind of squashed that, but man, that is, that's almost exactly the same amount. It is exactly the same amount all the way around on the rim. So if you're careful with your masking tape, you can do a roundel or a mask for white walls or whatever you want. So we're going to give this one a run through and uh, it's a good thumbs up, just uh, kind of crazy on the assembly. And uh, I will probably see you all next week uh, for some more tutorials and uh, some more news. Thanks for watching. And now go build something.